The second thing we're going to talk about in uh, circuits is uh, important equations. Because uh, in the analogy I talked about, I mentioned a lot of words, and I'd just like to make sure that the equations are sort of firmed up, that we, we know what we're talking about here. So the very first one we had talked about was actually uh, current. So we had I equals, this is an equation on your uh, data booklet. It goes like this, I equals delta Q over delta T. Now I is the current, and that's measured in amperes. Uh, delta Q, or just Q, that's a charge. Well, here it's a change in charge, but in this case it's just charge measured in coulombs. We had that one before. And of course, delta T is time, and that's measured in seconds. Okay, so that's, that's a very useful equation to use. Uh, another one that's on your uh, data booklet is uh, this one right here. It goes R equals V over I. Okay, this is another important one. Maybe I'll put these little uh, squares around them. I'll tell you, these are ones on your data booklet. This one over here is often called Ohm's Law. That's because some people like to rewrite this, and instead of having R equals V over I, people like to put the V first. In other words, some people like to say V equals I R. It's the same thing, right? Get V on its own, that means you take the I and throw it over here. So V equals I R. But this is Ohm's Law. So we better define uh, what the different things are. So in this case, we have uh, R. That's the resistance. In our analogy, that was the height of the uh, chairs. Resistance is measured in a unit called Ohm. So we use the Greek letter Omega, which is this one right here, to denote the units. Uh, it's actually kind of nice because they wanted to call it ohm, and so they thought, uh, well, let's use the Greek letter omega because it sounds like ohm. Some of my students are like, oh my god, but uh, I mean, this is, this is ohms. Now we've got uh, I again, that's the current, we know that one. That's measured in amperes. Some people just call it amps for short. And then we have V, which is the potential difference. And that's measured in volts. Now, a lot of people call this, instead of calling it potential difference, they just think of it as voltage. But in uh, IB exams, you'll almost never see it asked as voltage. They'll almost always ask for potential difference. So make sure whenever you see the words potential difference in your mind, that's just like, oh, that's the voltage. Because that's really what they're asking for here. Uh, now, you can have something be ohmic or non-ohmic. Uh, and that sounds a little bit weird, but uh, you can actually do that. So let's say we look at a graph here. Let's say you did an experiment where um, you maybe have a light bulb or something like that, and then you go ahead and you change uh, some settings, so maybe on the battery or something like that. And what you do then is you measure the potential difference and the current for different values of sort of battery. And then what you could do then is you could do a graph of the potential difference, measured in volts, against the current, which is measured in amperes. And again, if you look at this equation here, remember I talked about how important it was to do linearization. That means if I graph V on its own, that'll be like my Y here. And if I put that against I, let's actually say, let's just say I rewrote it as RI instead, just to make it look a little bit pretty, prettier, I guess. Um, this one right here then, if that's the X value, then the slope or gradient is going to be r. And because there's no plus or minus anything, that means I expect this thing to be directly proportional, which means it should pass through the origin. And it'll be a straight line, and it should have a slope of r. That's useful, because what if your goal was to find the unknown resistance? You could do it by a bunch of pairs. You know, you could use a V value and an I value, and from that you could calculate R. But then you have a different V value and a different I value, and you calculate a new R. You'd have a bunch of different R values and then try to take the average. But the whole point of doing a graph is to make it much easier. So if I did a bunch of these things and I had a bunch of data points, and then I drew a straight line through them, the slope of that straight line is going to give me a way better idea what R is. And in fact, then I can even know what the uncertainty is on it. So that's kind of nice. So if something behaves like this, it's like a straight line like that, we say it's ohmic, right? Because it follows this law. Something can be non-ohmic. In other words, that could be something that curves. 
Keep in mind, often on uh, IB exams, they like to throw this uh, a little bit differently. They'll switch the V and the I. Right, so in other words, it'll be a graph of I against V. Still okay, still expect a straight line. But some things, they actually heat up more uh, as you put in more power through them. So what happens then is that uh, they might actually curve a little bit up, or in the case of a different graph, they might actually look like they curve down. Basically, anything that curves is non-ohmic. In other words, it's not following Ohm's law exactly. So this works for most things, uh, and it has a nice straight line. But if it doesn't follow a straight line, then we say it's non-ohmic. So that's uh, something important. We also have an equation. Uh, this is for wires. This one's used less often, and it's actually not very complicated. They just, they're just just given an equation. So R equals, uh, how does it go? It's um, uh, rho L over A. So that's an equation for wires. And now uh, we already know R. R is resistance measured in ohms. So the new thing then is this rho. This is another Greek letter. So this is a Greek letter O. Has a, goes like a little curly P here. This is called the resistivity, which is a property of materials. And uh, it's actually measured in, let's see, this is going to be ohm meters. In other words, ohms times meters. L is going to be the length of the wire. The length of wire, and that'll be measured in meters. And A is just the cross sectional area. In other words, if you took that wire and you cut it and you looked at that front part of the wire, it's going to look like a circle. So that's a cross sectional area of that wire, and that's measured in meters squared. That's how I knew the units of resistivity because, see, this is meters squared and this is meters. So meter over meter squared just leaves me with units of meters. If I want rho by itself, this meter comes over here. So meters times rho, uh, so times ohms, I mean. So that's why it's ohm meters. This one's actually not really that complex. It just basically use the equation and away you go. But uh, a more important one, I think, is power. So we talked about this before, but this one right here I think is very important. This comes up a lot on exams. And um, remember before we talked about how to measure power in uh, topic two under mechanics. But here we have electrical power. So we still use the same letter, capital P. And this time we say it's V times I. In other words, the potential difference times the current. Or Hey, we could also do something else. It turns out if you use Ohm's law to replace V in this, then you'll get a different equation that has no V's in it. And it turns out you'll get I squared R. Or you can use Ohm's law to replace, well, I better make my two a little bit nicer. Or you can, Ohm's, you can use Ohm's law to replace for I here. You'll end up with uh, V squared over R. This is also on your uh, data booklet. We know all the other things, except maybe we better just write down what P is. So P equals power. And do you remember what the units of power are? That's really lame, but it's because it's in watts. So power is measured in watts. Now, uh, keep in mind, though, then that uh, power dissipated, this is a word we often use in a circuit. Okay, So power dissipated. Um, all that means is just, it's just heating up here. So if we have a circuit, uh, we can ask, you know, how much power is dissipated through that one resistor? Well, if we know the current and potential difference going through that resistor, then we know the power that's sort of lost. In this case, most objects, they heat up. Uh, so the key thing is power dissipated equals heating up. Um, so that's really nice and actually quite important. Now, what if you're only given current and resistance? Well, then you can use that one. And if you're just given a potential difference and resistance, then use that one. Doesn't matter. The key thing is that power dissipated, that's like the power that's lost. And that's because it heats up. I mean, anyone who's ever used any electronics, uh, that should be just about everyone. You're using a computer right now to see this, I'm assuming. Um, if you can do that, if you feel the back of your computer, or even if you're on a cell phone, let's say, uh, or a mobile phone, I guess we call it more likely. Um, let's say it's a smartphone or even a dumb phone. Uh, they get hot, don't they? I mean, computers and phones, they get warm. The reason they get warm is because there's lots of resistors in those, and those all lose power. In other words, there's dissipated power, and that's because they heat up. So the energy goes to heating up. 
And keep in mind this. Remember this equation I told you to memorize before, that power equals energy over time. Remember I told you to memorize that one? That one also comes into effect here. So in other words, uh, you could be given a crazy looking question that says, okay, an electric motor, it, uh, I think I talked about this before. Let's say you take an electric motor and it lifts up, I don't know, um, an elevator uh, from a certain height to another certain height. And it does it, uh, and the elevator weighs this much, and uh, it has a mass, uh, sorry, it has this mass of whatever, and it takes it this much time to raise it. And they'll say, what's the power dissipated? You're like, whoa, what? And the, or what's the power needed in order to do that? And the whole question here is, power is energy over time. So if you could figure out how much energy it costs it to go from a certain height to a certain height, well, in that case, it would be potential energy, gravitational. So that would be MGH over time. Then you have the power in watts. And maybe then you want to convert that to something in a circuit and say, fine, what voltage do you need to do it? Great, no problem, because that same power will also equal all these guys. Or girls, I suppose. Let's not be sexist. Um, so that's the key to doing these, I think, is understanding that power is all about um, either you're needing power to do something or you know, you're losing power. Basically, the idea is that things heat up, they tend to. And we can use this nice equation about power as energy over time in order to help us in really complicated looking questions.